Hello, and welcome to another episode of eBay Scavengers. I am Mikey, and today with us is Dave. Hey, Dave, how are you doing today? Great, Mikey. How are you? Great. Now, Dave uh, wrote to us at eBay Scavengers just uh, earlier this week and uh, had kind of volunteered some information about uh, his automotive experience and um, selling cars online. And uh, we were really interested because it's something a little bit different than what we've done before. And Dave also has a store on eBay and he's been selling some vintage items and such. And, uh, you know, I'd like to just start with um, how you got into eBay initially. Where did you start, Dave? Really, it was the car side. I, I spent my entire life in the automotive field on the retail car side and mostly in used cars. And a very close friend of mine, we had worked together on and off. Got some exposure probably in the early 2000s. Mm -hmm. um, one of the dealer groups he worked at with eBay, and, and he's a pretty sharp guy. And he ran with it, you know, educated himself. Our paths crossed again, and uh, one of my strong suits was always on the buy side, uh, sourcing and buying the vehicles. Uh, this was prior to, you know, eBay days. but So that was sort of my strong suit. And then he went ahead and put some money together, opened his own store, um, his own dealership, with the intention of most everything was going to be e-commerce on, on based, uh, eBay, Auto Trader, Cars.com. Um, we started in 08, <laughs> the summer of 08, and that was right before the economy crashed, which actually turned out to be a real blessing for us, believe it or not. You mean and you sold more cars right. because of the economic crash is that why it was a blessing I, I think it helped us sell more cars but what it really did was it gave us an opportunity to take the dollars that we had available which were not very many and maximize those dollars so it's pretty similar to what yourself and wendy and what i'm selling now is you know we, we have these like couple dollar items or five dollar items and it was the same concept in other words when the economy crashed i mean literally um we were talking about buying vehicles that were uh forty thousand dollars new a year later we were literally buying them for twenty thousand dollars and i know everybody hears the stories but oh you lose all this money when you walk off the lot you don't lose 50 percent right um uh it was unheard of in the business at that point i'd been in the car business for 15 some years i'm 41 years old now i started when i was 19 so so I think that really helped us. Uh, we had found a niche. E-commerce was really taken off. And here we were now able to buy these vehicles, that, that same exact vehicle three years later is what we had paid for it in 08. In other words, you know, once the economy started coming back in that. So, I mean, it was unreal, especially the vehicles that uh, weren't really fuel efficient. Um, you know, Tahoe's Escalade, oh, you know, the right. big trucks. Got you. They yeah. really dropped bad if they were oh. low mileage. And the eBay buyer wanted those vehicles. People that can shop online or, you know, what we found sold best on eBay, uh, those people really weren't hit by the economic downturn. So, <laughs> you know, it's just like anything. I mean, they say the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. Uh, the rich just got richer because those vehicles weren't worth anything and they just bought them cheaper. So You were kind of working as a buyer at that point. How much did you know about the vehicles you were buying and what was your sort of way of checking them out and purchasing them and and what were you looking for like just like anything else i mean it's like any that you do i don't know it's it's sort of strange you just sort of know i mean it's just like any seller i would say even on ebay you know you look at the items that you 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 and wendy have available on ebay now you know you walk into an estate sale or something like that and you see something and you just kind of got a good feel for it you take the tools that like terra peak now and you double check your gut feeling but it's the same way for me when I walk into an automobile auction. Um, most of our vehicles were either sourced at dealer-only auctions, which did not mean it was distressed merchandise, because that's not the case. Or we were sourcing them directly from dealers that would take them in trade. So in other words, a Mercedes dealer takes in trade a Cadillac. Well, they don't want to mess around with Cadillacs. So they would maybe call us or they would call a local wholesale out that, that would sort of middle the deal between them and us. But it's all based on experience. And then we would, again, take that feeling and we used a program um, and, and uh, eCarList, which is very similar to therapy on the car side. We called it analytics. That's what 
they called it. I mean, I think that's what Terapeak is. It's basically analytics. You're analyzing um, the market. Uh, so it's just experience based on experience. But, you know, I'd walk to an auction. There'd be 9,000 cars there that day. And they would run simultaneously. It's not like you see on Barrett Jackson on TV where, you know, it's one car and it takes 15 or 20 minutes. I mean, I would walk into an automobile auction. There'd be 30 lanes running at the same time. And a car would sell every 30 to 40 seconds so you just kind of gotta you know it's just experience wow so you really didn't have much time to examine it now once you bought the car is there anything Mm -hmm. you would do to it because when i come back from yard sales and i have a bunch of stuff i pretty much just wipe it down photograph it and it's up and listed was there anything like uh uh, like would you have a mechanic check it out would he were there any code testing or uh just detailing of the vehicle or anything like that really great that you just said that because it doesn't really matter. That's the beauty of eBay. Is it really doesn't matter if you're selling a $30,000 car or you're selling a $30 item. We did the same thing. We would clean the vehicle. We did have a mechanic check it out. I found that we did not want to outprice ourselves in the market because people shopping online are all price, 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 price. That's basically what it was. So yes, our process was Vehicle comes off the truck. We have the technicians check it out. And at that point, we do not make a bunch of repairs to the vehicle. I mean, if there's something catastrophic, of course, we're going to do it. But at that point, we really did not invest any money into the vehicle. Um, we made notes. We had internal notes where, you know, everybody in the dealership could electronically see what the vehicle actually needed. We're running through the detail shop. Uh, we have an in-house de- detail shop. Um, and then it would go into the photo line, into the photo booth, into what I called uh, the creative department where they would list the vehicle and, then, you know, it's under the salespeople. Um, and the reason we did that is because we wanted to make sure that we kept our cost in the vehicle low because, again, our margins were extremely small compared to the average uh, car dealer in the industry. And they're if if people really knew what we made in the cars that we sold, uh, they probably wouldn't believe us. Mm. I mean, they'd have to actually be in the industry to actually believe uh, we were making as little on the cars as we were. But it was all based on a high volume, big turn. Uh, you just take the benefits after that. And that's exactly how I am and I'm going to continue to run my eBay store. So, uh, Were there any situations where you're working with uh, eBay Motors on any part of it? And there was an issue with um, their policy or a sale or a, a buyer problem. Or they, it seems to me like when I sell something that sells for a few hundred dollars, I'm a little bit nervous that it could turn into a return or it might not make it to the customer. Like things could go wrong. Is there Was there stuff that happened where, you know, you'd have like a $20,000 Escalade that was kind of falling through on a sale? Um, what, what are some like issues with selling such, such high value items and how did that work with eBay? Okay. We have to remember that eBay Motors and our um, DSRs, they do not allow the buyer to rate us on shipping cost or efficiency. That gets taken out of the equation right off the get-go because, you know, it's usually handled by a third party. So I never really had to worry about that. All the shipping was insured. Um, when you're dealing with these carriers, uh, they the person that would ship the vehicle for you actually had their own insurance. So you knew that the vehicles were going to show up in the literally thousands of cars a year that we sold. We never had a vehicle where it didn't show up. We had one customer at one point try and tell us it didn't show up. But when the vehicle leaves, you, you get a bill of lading from the transport company. When it gets there, the transporter uh, you know, verifies that it was delivered. Um, 99% of the time, the customer is going to have to sign for it. In dealing with eBay Motors, if you're not a quote-unquote bad seller that just sells maybe a couple cars a month, like they know who you are and you spend a fair amount with them annually, it's a little different than our side of the business now, you know, on the smaller items, non-eBay Motors. Um, eBay tends to side with the seller because everyone needs to remember that eBay gets paid no matter what. If the car sells, eBay still gets paid. A sale fee on eBay for us was sixty nine fifty uh, per car to list it, and that was for 
each and every time that we listed the vehicle. It was, you know, there are no free listings. I, I guess it's like any other business sort of in a way that even they kind of got paid. They want you to list another vehicle. If you're selling 3,000 cars a year with eBay and spending a half a million dollars with them, they don't really need you to have, you know, 10 bad feedbacks a month. So right. they spend a little more time like investigating the situation, I guess is what I should say. And uh, it doesn't happen a lot. I mean, it, it, it really doesn't. I would still say our customer satisfaction rate was, it was a lot higher than I really thought it would ever be. It's just like anything else. You get, you get the bad apples and you get the, you get the people that you just can't ever satisfy. And it's funny on one of your guys' podcasts, mm -hmm. I remember hearing you say that if you get a client that uh, asks too many questions or this or that, you know, you guys just kind of like just try to pass on its sale. And it's, that's probably why I was so attracted to your podcast because a lot of things that you guys said trickled over and what we used to like talk about all the time. We used to do the same thing. This guy's trouble. It's just not worth it. Right. It's just not worth it. It's so. just like the cars. You would learn to identify the lemons, you know, before buying them yeah. and you learn to identify the customers that are going to give you a hard time and, and make the transaction difficult. Right. Do you find today uh, that you'll, see it, I don't know, come come across a Craigslist ad or see a car for sale on the side of the road or uh, be looking through a classifieds and see a car sale and you're like, oh, that's great. I could move that. It's worth more. Like it, I can get more for this. Um, do you find yourself tempted to still go back into the automotive sales as you just kind of see vehicles? Absolutely not. Um, <laughs> no, it's not because I don't want to sell an automobile. It's just because I do the same things as I would do now. I would much rather go to a thrift store, estate sale, or some other source that has a wide variety of inventory mm -hmm. rather than like spend countless hours on one item that I may or may not buy. I'd much rather walk into the thrift store and know that there's 3,000 things in there and I'll probably buy 10 to 15 or however many I want to buy. From your experience uh, with eBay Motors, um, you said that there were some scams that you came across. Was there a particular type of scam that people should look out uh, when buying a car through eBay mm. that comes to mind? Yeah. In the part of the country that I'm in, we actually had two dealers that were in the top, top, top percentage of eBay motor sellers in the country. What happened was years ago, eBay didn't use, to, you know, everybody's heard of the Carfax reports, right? Everybody here is get a Carfax and you're a reputable dealer. Mm -hmm. well, there's another type of report. It's called the, um, made by Equifax. It's called Auto Check. It's a lot less publicly known. Um, a lot of the dealers use it. It's actually probably more accurate than Carfax, but. Yeah. That can be argued. That's just opinion. What would happen was there was this extremely large dealer in our area. And at that time, we were small potatoes and they were, you know, the, the, really the big kids in the world. And what they would do would they would come through the auctions and they would buy vehicles that had a clean Carfax report. In other words, when I say clean, no accidents, no damage, no, you know, just looks like a really nice, well-kept car. But then on the auto check report, um, it may say frame damage because auto check had found out the car had frame damage because auto check is the authorized um, vehicle history report for all the major auction chains in the country, whereas Carfax isn't. Carfax is geared more towards you know, the public, they're selling these vehicles that have frame damage, but the public is, you know, because Carfax is king on, uh, in, in, in car sales nowadays. I mean, people, even on the buy side, I remember in the nineties when I was buying cars, it was all about looking at the car and checking to see if it had paint work. Does it have things and scratches and does it look pretty because the people are going to like walk on your lot and see if it's nice. Nowadays, when I buy cars, I really don't care if the cars had any paint work. Mm -hmm. Because the only thing that's really important to the consumer nowadays is, does the Carfax say if it's had paint work or not? If the Carfax says it doesn't have paint work or it's never been in an accident, then it's never been in an accident. Gotcha. Uh, auto check, yeah. is that something that the public can access? Can an individual just get an account and use auto check? Yes. Yes, they can. Um, they, you know, go to autocheck.com. What happened was in eBay went ahead 
and mandated that all eBay Motors listings included a free auto check report. I see. So every listing had a free auto check on it. And, you know, here you got these guys that have 700 cars sitting on a lot with frame damage on the auto check with all these car fixes. And it literally almost put them out of bed. And now um, eBay has gone back to where the display of the auto check report is optional for the dealer. And the dealer makes the decision on that. So my recommendation, any customer buying a vehicle online, no matter where they buy it, to double check the Carfax and the auto check. A-U-T-O-C-H-E-C-K. So, Dave, uh, how important today are the error codes on a vehicle? I have, uh, I guess all my modern used vehicles I have have a little OBT, OBD2 port, and you can plug in laptops and various devices to read those codes. How important is that in your listings and when the vehicle goes through, and how important is it to eBay Motors about those error codes? Well, if you list a vehicle on eBay Motors and you list that it has error code this, error code that, it better be half the price of any other car on there because otherwise you're not going to sell it. Because the public has a probably overinflated sense of what a check engine light really is. You know, these, these codes that are stored in the vehicles are primarily their emissions codes. Anytime your check engine light comes on, 90% of the time it's just an emissions code. The important thing is, I guess if you really want to be a savvy online buyer, your best bet is to have the vehicle, say you're on eBay Motors and you're looking at a used Audi and it's miles away, you're going to have it shipped to you. Have the vehicle taken at your expense to the local Audi dealer and have the Audi dealer inspect the vehicle for you because they will pull codes out of the vehicle that you and I, with our store bought or, you know, you buy an auto zone or something like that, your, uh -huh. your less expensive OB2 scanners, they're not going to pull the hidden codes that are really, really in there, you know, for things that you're not going to find. They're just going to tell you things. It's like an EVAP code, the gas cap's not good, the seal on the um, gas tank's you know, not good, you had a misfire which is no big deal. Um, so I would strongly recommend that you have the franchise dealer uh, inspect the vehicle for you. And then the franchise dealer is going to get a little overzealous in their um, examination of the vehicle because let's not forget, you know, they're in business to make money too. And uh, that's what they're hoping is that you're going to tell them, oh, yeah, well, well, go ahead and fix those things after I buy the vehicle. Take it with a little bit of a grain of salt. Get your report. Maybe take it to your local mechanic. Review the report with your local mechanic and say, you know, let him sort of interpret to you, you know, what it really means. Because you really might be passing yourself on what really is a good deal over something that, you know, a technician or service advisor maybe was having a bad day and they just sort of hammer the car and unnecessarily. Yeah, that's great. So, Dave, if it's all right, I'd like to close with just kind of a final um, pair of questions for you. And that is for yourself, if, as you go through mm -hmm. vehicles now, just for your personal ones, how would you sell a vehicle today just for yourself, not in selling a lot of vehicles or to be a business thing, but just to move on to your next one? And how would you buy a vehicle today? Um, would you use online stuff? And, you know, what is there sites that you would use? Or just how would you like to just do it for in your own personal cars? Buying a vehicle, I would start my search Bay Motors. I would start my search on autotrader.com. Yes, I would look. I would do my homework and research online first. I would make sure, and this is, I cannot stress this enough. If I were to buy a vehicle through eBay Motors, do not under any circumstance, allow the seller to convince you to purchase the vehicle, quote unquote, off of eBay, um, where you don't have the opportunity to leave feedback. Uh, your feedback is all you have. It's the only leverage you have. Protect yourself. Do not let anybody tell you that they have to pay a, you know, post, you know, final sale fee. That's all hogwash. Buy a vehicle in eBay Motors. Um, so I would do my research online, and then I, I would shop from home. I'm not going to waste my time driving around. I'm not going to go to my local dealer and kick the tires. If I was going to sell a vehicle, yes, I would uh, I would post the vehicle on eBay Motors. I would post the vehicle on autotrader.com, and I would post the, deal, the vehicle on cars.com. I would not post the car on Craigslist. It's nothing going to 
Craigslist. I like Craigslist, but um, I'm just not going to deal with that on, on something that's a kind of dollars. So. Gotcha. Yeah, I had a terrible <laughs> Craigslist experience where I sold a car. I got the appropriate amount for it. <laughs> And people were calling me for eight weeks. <laughs> you know, I just couldn't get my phone to stop ringing. I wouldn't be surprised if I get a call next week. Like, yeah, it was it was difficult. It was just so much call volume and so many people kind of interested, but not really. Yeah, I'm, so I'm glad to hear that you're kind of promoting some other sites uh, ahead of Craigslist. <laughs> if, if you buy a vehicle on eBay Motors and you either click the buy it now or the or you make an offer and the seller agrees to offer that you're really pretty protected probably more so just because the seller is going to want to protect his feedback if it really gets to push and shove um, and ebay gets involved like i said earlier they're probably gonna uh, side volume seller i've never sold a car personally i i hate to say it uh individually on ebay so i don't know how they'll do it but if you're buying from a dealer or somebody that sells a lot of vehicles you know they're going to weigh it a little bit more in their favor but at least protect yourself by staying within ebay you know i should have asked this a little earlier but i think it's important to add this in this this episode and that is what are the fees associated with selling a car through ebay motors 69.50 per listing oh that's it it's just one flat there isn't a percentage cut uh, once it sells, it's just there is no fee based on the percentage they sold it for. There used to be, and they changed that in ten. Which for eBay, they sort of doubled their profits because uh, so many vehicles got sold off of eBay because you know literally when it was two and three hundred dollars uh, in in final sale fees, customers were willing to negotiate down with the dealers, but. Um, no, it's a flat sixty nine. At least for for us, it was a flat sixty nine fifty. But it's around. There. And and remember, I say sixty nine fifty because we chose to do buy it now and an auction. You know, there's some certain things that 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 are, it can be cheaper. Well, I appreciate Dave yeah. that you uh, taking us through this um, and sort of explaining your experience and uh, the, the what's really very new to me is the auto side of eBay. So. That's quite helpful. So this is episode 66 of eBay Scavengers, and that was uh, Dave. Thanks for the interview, Dave. No problem, Mikey. Thank you.